Oh, great, you're making dressing for the turkey. I love dressing. Well, sorry to disappoint you, Carl. It's stuffing, not dressing. Dressing. Stuffing. Dressing. OK, then. Dressing it is. Really? Really. Well, where are you going? Well, I only make stuffing. So over to you, boo-boo. How childish. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, today we're going to be stuffing our turkey with dressing. Indeed we are, Carl. Now, a lot of people do uh, turkey at many times of the year, mm -hmm. so it's important for them to know how to cook it properly and safely. So just give us the drill on that. Okay, Carl. Myself, personally, I like a fresh turkey because it, I feel it's nice and moist. But you can buy the frozen ones. But when you do buy a frozen one, defrost it in the fridge and judge accordingly how, to, how long that's going to take. The other thing is, when cooking it, Carl, make sure it's 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And when you do, take the temperature between the drumstick and the breast there because that's the most thickest part down there. So that will give you a good, good reading there of the temperature. The other thing, Carl, once it's come out and you've eaten your turkey, there's going to be some turkey remaining on those on the carcass itself remove that immediately and refrigerate it leaving it on the counter food bone analysis people are going to start picking at it and things like mm. that especially if they leave it there overnight so just uh, once again remind us of the proper temperature 160 degrees Fahrenheit so if 160 degrees Fahrenheit all of the salmonella and gone. bacteria is gone, gone. Yeah. okay that's great uh, coming up on the program today, we have Fergus O'Byrne as our special guest. He's a Newfoundland legend, been singing in Newfoundland and Labrador for, uh, well, since the early 70s. Mm -hmm. And coming up as well, we have Keegan Bercy, who's the chef at Tiffany Village. What's he doing? He's going to be making us a beautiful cake with a caramel sauce. So stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757 96 well, it's our uh, distinct pleasure to welcome Fergus O'Byrne to the program today. And Fergus, you know, I was just thinking, it's not very often I see you without your banjo. <laughs> <laughs> you look naked today. I can play yeah. this instead. Okay. <laughs> so uh, tell, tell Fergus what we're going to be cooking today, Actually, Steve. Fergus, we're going to be making the stuffing uh, to go inside a actual turkey breast. Now, I normally would do the whole bird, but there's only three of us here today, so we're just going to stuff the breast. And with that, I've got some bacon started to render down mm -hmm. now. We're going to chop some onions, we're going to add that to it. A little bit of a twist to it, we're going to be putting some pineapples in there, some pears, and a little way from the Newfoundland type of taste, we're going to be putting some sage in there. So oh, I know that's uh, sounds, sounds something delightful. from the home country, it so to speak. So. Okay, so let's get started then. Yeah. It smells so good. Yeah. What would you're like going to have to tell me what to do. Absolutely. If we start stirring <laughs> that, Fergus, okay. there we go. What would like um, be without bacon? Huh? <laughs> yes, it almost indeed. smells like breakfast time, doesn't it? You know, yeah. So, yeah. So, Steve, you want me to uh, saute these potatoes? Mm -hmm. What we've got there is some fingerling potatoes there. They've already been blanched. You put a little bit of olive oil in there and some salt and pepper, and uh, you can start to fry them up as well. And I noticed earlier when you put a lot of olive oil into this as well. What I did is render the bacon down there, remove that fat, and I put a little bit of extra flavour there with the olive oil. So oh, okay. That's so, right. I'm going to add the onions to there for this. Yep. Start that going. Perfect. So Fergus, you were born in Dublin and uh, spent the early part of your life I in Ireland. Yes. Um, just paint a picture for me of, of what life was like uh, when you were a little boy in Ireland. Um, I, you know, it's a funny thing about growing up in Ireland. I don't have very great memories of food. I have memories of being outdoors all the time. Um, and I think it's probably typical of, of, of all of us. You As know, a child, yeah. You never ever spent any time indoors, except mm. in the winter time if you couldn't get out. But most of the time you're outdoors, you'd be in for food, grab a bite and you'd be gone again from mm. morning till night. Uh, I grew up in Dublin and uh, five siblings mm -hmm. and um, left Ireland when I was 19. Yeah, you were pretty young when you came to Canada. I was Canada. young when I came to Canada. I came, yeah. uh, came over when I was 19 and lived in Toronto for, uh, yeah. lived in Toronto yeah. for about four years and then found my way to Newfoundland. So, uh, you don't have any early memories of your, of your granny's uh, Christmas cake or anything like uh, yeah, that? Yeah, cake, no. Uh, Christmas time was really, really, uh, we, we used to visit. I think what used to happen when I look back on it was that uh, in the morning time, uh, 
our relatives would come to visit us and then in the afternoon we would go to visit them and I think really what it was giving time for my mother to be in the kitchen cooking and not to have us underfoot. <laughs> so my father would take us out to all the various cousins and aunts and uncles and we'd travel around and, and, uh, and visit and, and have cake and mm. chocolates and cookies mm. and stuff like that. One thing I do remember though is uh, my both of my aunts uh, worked with Cadbury's. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> We used to love going to their place because we used to get, get all the, the treats and the chocolate. Well, we'd get all the uh, all all the all the leftovers. Yes, any, yeah. any breakables, any breakages that, that they have yeah. at the factory, yeah. they would send home with them. So we used to have the great big treat yeah. and every yeah. time we went to Maine so, Charles. So why Canada? Why did you end up coming to Canada? <laughs> well, my it's a, a kind of a, a roundabout story. My my whole family, my mother and father, they all ended up going to the states. And it was 1970, 1967, uh, right in the heart of the Vietnam War, mm. and I was 19. Oh, yeah. And so I opted to live in Toronto and commute mm. down to Detroit where they were living mm. Mm. Uh, on a regular basis. But then, you know, one thing led to another. I became a musician and then found Newfoundland. And, and so, you know, the commute is a mm. bit longer these days. Mm. But it's, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm glad I did. I mean, Toronto was great, but when I started my musical career in Toronto, I. I I just sort of went out of it, kind of as a whim, mm. you know, decided to quit my day job. You're, you're waiting to put something absolutely. in here. Absolutely. Yeah, what what am I doing wrong? So, no, no, you're doing absolutely <laughs> fantastic. We've got our pears in there, we've got our sage in there, we've got our uh, uh, pineapple. I'm just going to add some panko breading there, which is a, a Japanese breading. Wow. And it's going to mix up nicely. We'll put some... Uh, just keep folding it in. Just keep folding it in. A little bit of turkey stock in there as well. Yeah. And what I've got here, Fergus, I've put some saran wrap down. I'm going to take my turkey breast, lightly season the saran wrap there, so that's the back of the turkey breast. I'm going to take an incision down the center like so. Okay, put that to the side. And that dressing is basically ready now, and I'm just going to take that and put it into the center there, so. Rather you than me. <laughs> no problem, I'll take over. Okay. Um, so what, uh, what kinds of foods don't you eat? Yeah, you I eat everything. You, you, you like seal meat, you eat, I eat walrus, every, I, I believe. I travel on the road with Jim Payne a, a, a lot all over the world, and uh, you know, Sometimes folk musicians get uh, get pegged with the idea that they they're peculiar about their foods, <laughs> but whenever anybody asks us, we say we're omnivorous. We eat everything and anything that's, that's, placed that's available to you. And yeah. I love trying I love trying all sorts of food. I've I've pretty well eaten everything. Okay. Uh, I saw a show recently about the woman cooking squirrels. And we squirrels? Yeah, here in Newfoundland. Oh really? And yes, I know back home they yeah, do. The, yeah. the gypsies would, would eat squirrels yeah, so, and no, hedgehogs. That, that looked interesting. Yeah. So, but uh, yes, everything and anything. And, and traveling where you do travel every, mm. all over the world. When I was in Australia there several years ago, I was staying in a hotel where I had my own cooking facility. So I bought kangaroo. Oh at, right, at, at yeah, the local yeah. grocery store. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And you know, as a very red, red dark meat. Didn't yeah, it was. A red, I mean, it was it was doctored up a fair bit, but uh, but it still you know it still had that distinct taste that wasn't quite like anything else. Yeah, it didn't taste like chicken. <laughs> no, it didn't taste like chicken, no. Or turkey. I've got an automatic uh, pepper and salt yes, mill here. Yes, that's the gizmo, so that is. Yeah, that's a nice gizmo, yeah. So, what I'm going to do now, I've wrapped that very tightly with saran wrap, cling film. So just now I'm just going to wrap that in aluminum foil, and that saran wrap is going to keep all those juices in there, completely. Oh. So you can put saran wrap in the oven? Absolutely, and it's going to seal, seal all them juices in there and retain it all, you see, so. Yeah. You can put it, you can put it in the oven as long as you put tin foil on over it, so it doesn't... So it doesn't melt. So that will go straight yeah. into the roaster now. To our gravy, which is going to be very unique, I'm going to add, which I made a little bit earlier, I'm going to, oh, you can add Fergus, is add a little bit of marmalade in there. Oh well. my goodness. So the sweetness and the fruits are really going to go I'm well. I'm immediately with it thinking too. of my mother in law, Winnie Brown, out mm. in Ireland's Cove, because she loves gravy. Oh, is that right? <laughs> how, much, how, much, uh, how much should I put in? Oh, put it all in, Fergus. Oh, put it all in. Oh, yes, absolutely. You and just I scored some brownie points there, Fergus I'm boy, mentioning <laughs> mother in law. <laughs> I love marmalade. <laughs> I'll just wash my hands because we've Great. been touching all that oh. turkey there. And stir that up. Absolutely. There's a little ladle there, or a wooden spoon, whatever you wish to use. Now, should I come back on this burner? Too? Yeah, you can. You can bring it forward there, Fergus, actually. Now, you said you became a musician when you moved to Toronto, yes. but, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that when you were a little boy, you started playing oh, yeah. 
I yeah. started I started piano uh, formal piano lessons when I was seven. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I did that for seven years, and I also sang in church choirs mm. and and. Uh, but then I, I just, I, I guess uh, around when I was about 14, it was the great, uh, the great folk revolution. Bob Dylan, John Baez, mm -hmm. you know, all those yeah, great right, singers. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Dubliners, Clancy Brothers, Steel Ice Band, all those mm -hmm. English bands as well. Now, how's that? That looks beautiful. And what we'll do now, well, Fergus, because we've got the wonders of television in the oven, we've got one already ready. Oh, oh wonderful. If I can just get you to stand okay. inside there. Can I just leave that there? Just leave that there, okay. that's perfect. And then we'll just take this one out. Nice full breath. Oh. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take our knife and we'll just casually go in there. Oh, the oh, juice oh, is coming oh. out now. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Look at that. Oh, now I'm Fun. hungry. Now perfect, I'm hungry. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. all that and there's the saran there. wrap. There's the saran wrap. Yeah. Perfect. That's going to be a great well Because I've heard, you know, you, you can cook turkey in these special bags. Yes. Yeah, so that you can but get so them that's basically the same. Same thing. Oh. Absolutely. Now that's going to let it rest now for about 20 minutes yeah. and we'll slice that, we'll serve that with our marmalade au jus or gravy and then we've got our beautiful fingerling potatoes there as well. Yes, so indeed, this is starting so to boil. To boy. This looks yeah. fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head down to the wine cellar okay. and see if I can uh, pick out a nice wine to go with our turkey with stuffing. With Perfect. pineapples. Sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, Fergus, I'm a chef by trade. I've never read a, a note of music before, but I want to learn how to make to play the steel drums. Do you think it'll be hard? You know, like the Jamaican steel. Not drums really, because uh, I, I, a lot of steel drums they actually have the notes on them. The no notes on them. The notes yeah. on them. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to do something different, and that's my next trait. I think you know. So, <laughs> well, there should be lots of oil drums around Newfoundland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Andrea Maunder, Bacalao. How are you? Go. Nice to see you Hi, in the cellar you. today. Yeah, thanks. Nice yeah. to be here. Well, Andrea, look, we've got um, stuffed turkey breast today. Um, I, now, what do you do? You say dressing or stuffing? Because dressing. Steve and I had this. Yeah, me too. Steve and I had this big set to about. You know, is it stuffing? Is it dressing? And sure, I mainlanders said, say stuffing. That's we right. We say dressing we here. We say dressing, and Deed we're we sticking to it. <laughs> um, so uh, it's got some uh, unusual ingredients in it. Uh, there's uh, well, fruit in it for one thing. Uh, pineapple and pear. Did I notice yes, the recipe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Uh, what? What would you? What would you choose to? Uh, to match up with that? Well, certainly we're going to go with white because it is turkey, although without those, you know, tropical fruits, we could certainly do a Pinot Noir with turkey, many people do, but because of the little bit of residual sugar and those sort of tropical fruit aromas, we're going with three big floral fruity varietals today. Um, really, really interesting. So you might wonder about the, the floral and the... Yeah, what, what does floral mean? Uh, well, flowers, obviously. Does it mean that uh, there's there's a hint of uh, flower, the, the aroma of a flower in the wine? There really is. You get the aromas and the flavors. So in white wines, they tend to be white flowers, usually. So something like chamomile or orange blossom. In red wines, you might notice more violets or roses. Mm, yeah, okay. it's not mutually exclusive, but yeah. certainly those are sort of the flavor profiles. Mm. And these are all tropical as well. They have kind of pineapple and pear and all those things going on. So I have three for you today. This is a Chardonnay Viognier blend. So Viognier is one of those big floral varietals. This is from Argentina. It's Finca La Linda, northern, sort of north central Argentina. Big tropical floral fruity, so it's got that little bit of residual sugar, but it has a crispness on the finish, so it's going to cut through sort of the fattiness. I know there's bacon in the dish as well. It's going to balance really nicely. We also have, from Canada, the mm. Umbrella. So this is a Riesling Gewürztraminer blend. Again, Riesling is big and floral, can be vinified in a dry style or a, um, a sweeter style. And Gewürztraminer is one of those big lychee and tropical fruit. And a little bit spicy. Can be, exactly, yeah. So that would be lovely with the turkey dish as well. And then we have back to Argentina for the Don David Torrantes. And this again is one of those big floral fruity varietals, mm -hmm. which is lovely. And all of these are under $16. So great oh, price points today, too. Great, yeah. Now, this one that has the uh, Gewürz and Riesling blend, would that have that, uh, you know, 
classical petroly nose? You're not going to find it too much in this one because the Gewurztraminer has rose petal and lychee, so much of that going on that it kind of diminishes what you would normally think of as some of those petroly aromas in the Riesling. Okay. But the Riesling does give it beautiful balance. Well, uh, I'm going to try this one. I think you're really going to love yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And I love both of these wines I love individually, so together I'm sure I'll like it too. Yeah, it's going to be Thanks awesome. so much, Andrea. Welcome. Cheers. Now, for a final touch, we'll just put our marmalade gravy over the turkey breast, and uh, let's go and join Fergus and Carl in the dining room and see when they enjoy their stuffed turkey breast. Well, Fergus, we've got a uh, Gewürztraminer. Um, isn't that, didn't I say that well? <laughs> <laughs> From Pelly Island Winery, a Canadian uh, winery to go with our turkey, and I think it's going to be a nice, uh, a nice match. So. Please, yes, uh, do us the honor of tasting wait. I can't the wait. turkey and rendering your verdict. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. I think you did a good it's job on the potatoes as well. That's, um, that's very tender yep. and nice, n nice and moist, which it is uh, tender. it's difficult sometimes with white breast oh, meat. Oh, no, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. Uh, Fergus, I, I, I need to ask you something. Uh, how did you, you moved to Toronto, but that's where Ryan's Fancy was formed. Yeah. What's the story behind it? Well, what happened was we, uh, at that time, there was just a whole slew of, 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 you know, ballad groups, what they call ballad groups in those days, folk bands. And just through osmosis, myself and Dennis and Dermot came together over a period of about three or four years. And in the meantime, uh, with various bands, we had toured Newfoundland, and the time came in 1971 when we all kind of just decided, look, I think we'd be better off in Newfoundland, go to Newfoundland, go to university, put ourselves through university, playing music. And then we came down and Why, why Newfoundland, though? Uh, because of the appreciation of the music and, and uh, the depth of the culture here. So you uh, played here? Oh, yes, I mm. played here and uh, came down here with Sullivan's Gypsies in, in okay. uh, late 1969 and 1970. And just, uh, I was, because uh, I'd never heard of Newfoundland in mm. Ireland. And I came here and just the, the wealth of knowledge and culture and just enthusiasm for music, for Celtic music, was here. And it just, uh, you know, it seemed like the, uh, a right, right the thing right to do. Thing. Is yeah, that the yeah. same thing you did with your son? He went to university and he's now playing music? Well, he went to university, but he became a musician when he was three. <laughs> 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 he started playing when he was three. And he's, you know, he's gone through school playing, playing music in the bands, but he's now his, his big forte is accordion and concertina and fiddle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a great player. It's interesting, you know, uh, that uh, the Irish don't know that much about Newfoundland because I think a lot of Newfoundlanders assume, because we have such a big Irish population or people with Irish ancestry yeah. here, that uh, the, the folks in Ireland would know everything about Newfoundland. But that, yeah, that's not no, the case. Yeah, no, it's not. And I think it's big, I, to a certain degree, it's because of the whole American uh, experience of, of the Irish. Mm -hmm. You know, they came because of the famine and that whole angst. Mm -hmm. and, and you find if you talk to people from, from of Irish descent in other parts of, of, of the con you know, North America, they, you get this sense from them, not all the time, but you get this sense of the tragedy of Ireland. Mm. But here, it's the celebration because, you know, people came here to work, they made decent money when they were back Doing here with the yeah, fishery, yeah. Mm -hmm. back and forward they settled. And, uh, you know, the, the, I, I was talking to uh, somebody just recently, a, a young Irish fellow who was over here visiting, and he said, uh, God, he says, Ireland, it's just like Ireland was 20 years ago. Mm. That That's feeling, that yeah. sense. And that celebration, a very quiet celebration of the Irishism, mm. mm. because, you know, we have that huge English popula right. population here too. Mm. And the beauty of it all, and I think that's what really attracted us at the time to Ryan's Fancy, was, was that uh, the blending of the two cultures was so seamless. It was just such a nice feeling to come here and, and none of that, uh, you know, none of that angst and political mm. stuff going on back and forward that, yeah. uh, you mm. know, I travel with Jim Payne, who's a great Salvation Army man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a... Uh, you're quite, you're quite the combination. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, both, good, both, both love to sing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wish we had an hour to spend with you, Fergus, because there's so much more I'd like to ask you about, but uh, maybe another time. Yes, and indeed. Thank you very, very well, much thank for you being very on much. One Chef, One Critic. Forward. Been a Cheers. great guest. Cheers. Cheers. Sláinte. Yeah. And we'll be back with more of our program and Keegan Bercy of the Tiffany Village is going to do a fabulous dessert. 
Tiffany Village Retirement Residence is one of the premier luxury residences in the city of St. John's. It has absolutely wonderful amenities like a movie theater, a spa, games room, and it goes on and on and on, plus a dining room that I think is the equivalent of, or even better than some of the finest hotels you'll visit. Uh, the food there is amazing. The person responsible for that is with us now. He is Keegan Bercy, the chef of Tiffany Village. Welcome, Keegan. Thank you, Carl. So, um, Keegan, what are we doing? You've been there a little while now, I, I, yeah. uh, here at uh, Tiffany Village. Uh, what are you going to be making for us today? I'm going to make a, a, a little dessert here that's a uh, favorite at Tiffany. It's a uh, it's an apricot delight, we call it, mm -hmm. with a little uh, caramel sauce. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the ingredients? Mm -hmm. I see you've got something here. Uh, we have uh, apricot, little egg, little brown sugar, flour, you know, everything, all natural ingredients, homemade. You know. So th this is dried apricot? <coughs> dried apricot, so it's rehydrated in a little hot water and a little baking soda. Just Excellent. To, okay. Yeah. And what would you do with that? You just blend that all? Or? Yes, I uh, put it all into a, a blender. Mm -hmm. and uh, mix it together at different stages and it all goes into a little baking pan and so uh, for magic just happens. for clarity Keegan all of these ingredients that we're looking at here are what went into these little yes. cakes yes okay and you say this is very popular in the dining room there yeah they love it so and how would you present it uh, I would present it uh, a little like this we take our, our warm cakes fresh mm -hmm. from the oven mm -hmm. we just place them on our plate I like the timbal effect there it's got mm. some nice height hasn't it we just take uh, a little of our hot sauce here. Uh, and what is, is, is this caramel? It's like a, a caramel, caramel toffee sauce, I guess, okay. glaze, you know, we mm -hmm. can call it. So you're going to pour that on the plate or over the? Over the cake. Okay. It's all nice. served warm, of course. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that now. You know, apricot is one of my favorite fruits, and I, I don't think we see them enough in restaurants, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I love it. I love them. And we're just going to, to finish this with a little whipped cream. Pipe on some cream. Yeah. Just a yeah. little whipped cream. Now, you, you, you mentioned the freshness of all your ingredients. Is that synonymous with all your, all yes. your menu, yes. menu planning? It's not, there's nothing pre-made coming into the place? No, Everything's no, made from no. scratch? We plan our menu around what we can get our hands on. Yeah, and, you know. Yeah. And uh, we're just going to finish our dessert here with just a, little, uh, just a little sugar spiral, you know, something just to set it off. Okay. You now, know? did you make those? Yes. They look like they might be a little bit complicated <laughs> for me. Uh, patience uh, is the word. <laughs> patience is the word, yeah. Okay. So for every 10 you make, you get one, right? Yeah, uh, yeah something yeah. like that. <laughs> so uh, basically your culinary philosophy at Tiffany Village is that you do everything from scratch, everything's fresh, mm -hmm. quality ingredients. That's right. And uh, do you ever try to accommodate the wants or desires of your residents? Well, like any like any place you know you have certain people living there that might need a little assistance and different types of dietary needs and sure. we do everything possible to meet their dietary needs whatever yeah. it might be yeah you know if it means doing 40 or 50 customized plates different meals every day that's what we do that's to meet what you their do. needs mm. yeah and uh, what what about the what about Tiffany Village I, I, I kind of think it's like living in a hotel because it does look extremely luxurious yeah. and beautiful. And the dining room looks like a cruise ship. Yeah, <laughs> how, how would you describe a Tiffany Village? It's a nice atmosphere. It's a, you know, a beautiful building, uh, people there, there's lots of different little events and everything for them to do, and they you know, enjoy it, and company is the thing, you know? Yep, and uh, do you have any idea how many residents you have these days? Uh, um, you have quite have a few now, I think. We have 110 rooms. We have about yep. 125 to 130 residents. Wow. And. Uh, all yeah. different stages of needs, you know, sure. here. Sure, yeah, yeah. Listen, I got a tough kind of taste. <laughs> I can't wait anymore. Uh, it looks so beautiful. And uh, Steve, you can probably share this one because... Oh, okay. We'll, yeah. that, that one looks so pretty. We'll let the audience continue oh, to... Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, bask this, in this its, is it for me. Cheers, bask dear. in its glory. Yeah. Enjoy. Okay. Oh, nice and warm. And the apricot and the caramel sauce. Mmm. Mm. Very, very nice. Mmm. We can really taste the uh, apricot coming through. Love sure. it. Yeah, it's nice. It's just get, get the you know the real homemade like Nan would make. You know the, yeah. the apricot. You know. Yeah. Plus it's it's you know. Got this a looks like fine dining this looks well. like um, almost looks like a ribbon on a present. Yeah. And I know it took you a long time to make it, but I'm gonna eat it. Before, <laughs> <laughs> like you would. Uh, well, Keegan Mercy, executive chef of Tiffany Village. Thanks for being on our show today. You're very welcome. It was lovely having you.
And that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. Mmm. I'm going to finish, finish eating this. You will. Here we go. Here you go. Thank you very much. <laughs>